you enjoy ancient history and you want to know more about ancient inventions, ancient structures, ancient queens, theories surrounding the ancient world, uh, human evolution, whatever actually, nearly everything that has to do with the ancient world, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload, and maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member if you enjoy my work. In northern China, archaeologists have discovered evidence that's pointing to a previously unknown Paleolithic culture of Homo sapiens in the area. So this discovery was made at a previously already discovered Paleolithic site known as Jama Bay in the Niawan Basin. So my name is Kaylee and in this video I'm going to tell you everything that I could find out about this previously unknown culture of Homo sapiens that left unique traces behind in the area during the time that they lived there. The Niawan Basin in northern China is well known for its Paleolithic sites ranging in age between 2 million years old and 10,000 years old, which is quite the range. <laughs> of course, as you can imagine, more than one species of human lived in the area over the course of these nearly 2 million years. Again, quite a range. <laughs> My personal educated guess would be that Homo erectus would have definitely lived in the area and there's quite a high probability that even Denisovans and Neanderthals lived in the area as well as for at least a short while as evidence now has shown that Homo sapiens arrived in the area around 40,000 years ago instead of the previously thought 29,000 years ago. One of the pieces of evidence is this latest discovery and I completely understand that you, all of you watching this now, are on the edge of your seat when it comes to what this latest discovery actually is. So a new article that was published in Nature recently described a unique 40,000 year old culture that lived in the Niawan Basin at the site of Jama Bay and this culture left the earliest known traces of the processing of ochre in East Asia and a distinct set of stone tools that are quite blade-like. So these stone tools and the processing of ochre are unique and extremely rare in the entirety of northeastern Asia, especially around this time, as this seems to be the earliest evidence of ochre processing not only in the immediate area, but in the entirety of eastern Asia. So it's finds like these that shift the timeline back and some things truly are older than we currently think. But until we find the evidence for it, it's usually just mere speculation when people talk about it. So without the finds, it's speculation. And as long as the hypotheses aren't based on evidence, they are just that, a hypothesis. And that that's okay. I like hypothesizing, I like theorizing, and we definitely need to keep doing that because sometimes a hypothesis is indeed true. But without the evidence for it, we cannot pretend that it's any factual history, <laughs> you know? So there was a team of international researchers working at the Jama Bay site. It wasn't just Chinese people, it was quite in a range of a team. And they've recently published their findings in the Journal of Nature. And now we're gonna go over what they explained in that publication. So this recent discovery offers important new insights into the cultural innovations of Homo sapiens during their expansion of populations in this particular area. The different types of ochre that were discovered and processed at the Jama Bay site were not from local sources. But according to a research team from the University of Bordeaux, these ochres were rather brought to the site from different locations. So they were sought after. Hey. The pieces of ochre were processed through the pounding and abrasions that produced powders of different colors and consistency. There are large, large quantities of artifacts with pigments, including two pieces of ochre with different mineral compositions. But there is an elongated limestone slab as well. And this slab has smoothed areas that bear ochre stains which in my personal opinion seems to be quite significant. <laughs> and all these named artifacts were discovered on a surface of red ochre stained sediment. 
This does show the high amount of ochre that was processed here at the Jama Bay site and truly shows its significance and probably the red ochre was most in demand or most easily found because, you know, the sediment was red ochre stained. So the stone tools that were discovered here are remarkable as well and you'd think that it's not that special as we find stone tools nearly everywhere. But here we have this find that's actually a key to understanding the creation of stone tools in northern China. This is because there's quite little to no, nothing, nada, known about the stone tool industry here in Eastern Asia around this time. Little to no evidence until the microblades were introduced in the area around 29,000 years ago. So up until 29,000 years ago, there wasn't much known about the stone tools because they weren't discovered, they weren't found, they weren't, they, it seemed like they weren't made. Until, of course, this particular discovery with, well, I mean, let's just call it a hoard because it's quite a large quantity and I feel like a hoard and a large quantity is sort of the same. It's not much of a difference between them, you know? So. What can the stone tools discovered here at Shama Bay tell us about this key transition period of Homo sapiens in the area? I mean, stone tools. Well, first of all, the stone tools with their blades are unique for the region and up until now have not been found elsewhere, actually. The majority of these stone tools is very, very tiny. And when I say very tiny, I really actually do mean very, very tiny. More of half of the discovered blade-like stone tools measure to less than two centimeters, which is really small. This is about two centimeters. It's, it's not big. <laughs> there are of course some bigger sized stone tools that they have discovered and seven of which show clear evidence of being hafted to a handle. And they were researched and the residue analysis and functional analysis suggest that these stool, stools, <laughs> suggest that these tools were used for things like boring, height scraping, the whittling of plant materials and cutting in soft animal matter, like for instance meat. There have been a number of multi-purpose tools discovered at the site as well and these multi-purpose tools haven't been found at older sites and they've also not been found at slightly younger sites. So that in itself is quite significant as well. And all of this shows the uniqueness of this particular group of humans that created them. So I do want to note that at the Jama Bay site itself, the researchers have not yet discovered any hominin remains, which is weird. But these tools show clearly that modern humans or Homo sapiens and other archaic human species arrived in the area at least 40,000 years ago when we look at the soil samples. We also know that Homo sapiens were indeed present in the nearby sites of Chanyangdong that dates actually from approximately the same time around 40,000 years ago and it's at this site that researchers have discovered the fossils of Homo sapiens. So modern humans were also living at the slightly younger sites of Salkit and Zukudian Upper Cave as there have been fossils of Homo sapiens found there as well. So we already know that in the larger area around the Jama Bay site, Homo sapiens were living there. And all of this points to Homo sapiens having lived in and around the Jama Bay site around the same time of the creation of these tools some 40,000 years ago as well. I mean, one plus one equals two. I can do maths some days. <laughs> what is strange, however, is that even though the evidence of the stone tools or lithic technology, as we could call it if we want to be a fancy schmancy today, which I often do like, but <laughs> these stone tools and the ochre processing and even the hafted tools were found here. But it's strange because there's no evidence of the other innovations that we see at other sites around the world around the same time as well. And when I say other innovations, I mean there are no formal bone tools, no formal bone ornaments, and that to me is quite peculiar and I find it very strange if I'm going to be completely honest with you. So this early population of Homo sapiens in the area may have interbred and interacted with the Homo erectus species or the Denisovans and maybe even Neanderthals in the area. 
At least it for sure seems that they have interacted with other archaic groups, and it seems like cultural exchanges did occur between these groups, until the microblade technological using Homo sapiens arrived in the area around 29,000 years ago, because they seem to have replaced all previous populations in the area. And when I say replaced, I don't necessarily mean that they killed them all off or whatever. I mean that most likely this new group who entered the area was much, much larger. They interbred with them. Maybe they brought diseases with them. And this made the other archaic groups and previous Homo sapien culture disappear. Maybe they left the area or they were completely dissolved into this new group. It's all possible. The authors of the Nature publication that came out about this new discovery now propose that the idea of continuous cultural innovation or fully formed set of adaptations does not actually fit the archaeological record that we have. The expansion out of Africa wasn't a continuous flow of direct adaptations and innovations. What these researchers now propose is that we need to find a sort of mosaic of innovation patterns with spreads of earlier populations and their innovations, local traditions, local inventions, local new practices. And all of this transitionally evolved with cultures learning and teaching each other. You know, it's, they learned skill sets from each other. They taught skill sets to each other. Um, there were cultural exchanges and interbreeding. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I feel like these researchers are right. And the evolution of the innovation, the technologies, the creation of stone tools, the ochres, the bone tools, the ornaments, the cave paintings, and so much more didn't just happen in one continuous wave all over the planet, but rather it happened in a location and it spread a little bit. And then it happened in a different way, in a different location and spread out a little bit as well. And they taught it to each other and the cultural exchanges and everyone made it their own. So the knowledge traveled over time. And sometimes some of that knowledge got lost. It's sort of like the circle of life. Things start and things end. And of course, as you can imagine, I will keep my eyes and ears open for new archeological discoveries because I love making these videos and yeah, with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. And click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. Or do an impromptu live stream, because I'm very annoying like that. <laughs> if you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. Click one of the links in the description down below. Or click a video in the end card if you have no idea what to watch, because it's set to best for viewer. So YouTube will cater to you. Uh, that's very nice. I'd also like to thank my patrons and my channel members. I'm eternally grateful for your support and I actually love uh, receiving the fun messages in the direct messages on Patreon. And I try to respond to everyone and sometimes I have these amazing funny back and forths or some people send me information. So yeah, I really love that. And if you haven't done that yet, then I mean, I highly suggest that you do. Hi, message me on Patreon. Wonderful. And with that said, we've reached the end of this video. I've blabbed enough. I'm Kaylee, back in the Netherlands, back from Malta. I've got my wonderful ladies with me here on my table. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. And modern humans will 